Good afternoon. Actually, good evening. I'm running a bit late today, but I did explain. Well, I will explain. <laughs> um, this is episode number 556. And the topic today is honesty and integrity. Keys or qualities or requirements for a healthy relationship. And I'm going to explain more about that and give you a little personal story from something that happened today that's why it's present for me. But before I get to that, let me introduce myself and let you know who I am. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find and create balance in love, life, and, and love, life, and business. Interesting, I slipped that one out. Okay, I'll start with, let's start with it again. I help strong, successful women, high-achieving high women, create and find balance in love, life, and business. That's better. And every day for the last, well, for two years now, I've done Facebook Lives, because I actually reposted today my first one from two years ago. That was kind of cool. I've come a long way, as it were. And for the last probably 20 months of that time, I've done daily broadcasts, which are leading to this one, which is number 556. And the topic again today is messages, sorry, this is the talk's called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. That's the title of the overarching theme. Yeah, it's been a long day, my mind's a little bit fuzzy, so I'm going to attempt to get through this cleanly, so bear with me. So the topic today again is, again, it's episode 556, the topic today is in honesty and integrity requirements for a healthy relationship. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened for me today in experience that really, as I sit with it, I'm grateful for at the same time, challenge. So let me explain this one. Um, and I gotta, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what, I need, to, I need to do this more anonymously because I don't want to out any names or talk about the situation. But bottom line was, is that a couple of years ago, I was around an event which I wasn't approved to be at, but I got passed to be there. Hi, Gina, nice to see my broadcast. Um, and by the way, this is Facebook Live first, in case you're watching on YouTube, wondering who's Gina? Because <laughs> I'm interacting with people on Facebook Live. If you're watching it there, you'll see the names of the people in the comments, and I'll say what they say. If you're watching on YouTube, you miss out. So a couple of years ago, I was at the event. Um, well, as you say, it was a PAX event because that's where I was this weekend where the second part of the story comes from. So basically a couple of years ago, I was at um, an event that I wasn't qualified to be at in terms of staffing. I was staffing the event. I wasn't taking, I was staffing. And if you've ever done seminars and trainings and teachings, there's a um, sequence of events you get to which are prerequisites for the next one. So you can't just jump into the high-end seminar. You've got to go through the basic ones first. I've been through that a lot of times in trainings and studied it, learned it, and staffed as well. And the bottom line was at the end of that one, I felt there was an incomplete communication with the people in charge. And again, I'm trying to keep this somewhat fuzzy and anonymous because I want to respect boundaries and also keep some things private. But basically tonight, at the end of this weekend, it's been, bug I mean, it hasn't been bugging me for two years, but it's been on my radar. And being back in the same energy with the same organization, I wanted to talk about it. And so I found the person I needed to talk to because it was really feeling it was in their court, not as so much in their court, but I felt like I needed to communicate it just to, to express where I was because I was feeling out of integrity and dishonest, which is why I'm talking about this topic today. So I shared with her my experience and what I was carrying, because she didn't remember it, but I did, and I wanted to share about it. And so when speaking with her, I felt one that I was being clean, and this is a thing for me, and, I'm, and maybe just my own experience, but when I'm speaking from a place of integrity and honesty, I feel a lot cleaner afterwards. It's like an internal shower sort of thing. But the other thing is for me is also is that when I'm not being clean and, and carrying this around for a couple of years, as much as it wasn't on me, but it was something I hadn't voiced, I look back and realize there was some crud I was sort of feeling inside, this, this incomplete, it was like having, um, in a way it's kind of like when you have sand in your shoe. It's not painful, but it's a noticeable. And it wasn't that noticeable, really, because it's been two years. But this weekend sort of brought it back up to the surface, and I was like, I need to voice this at some point. I could feel the discomfort. So post-conversation, even though I've actually, um, by saying what I said and sharing what I shared, said, I've been excluded from certain events and trainings now because I've self told the truth. But I tell you, I feel a lot lighter, a lot cleaner, and a lot more in integrity because now I know a path I can follow. And the truth is, I'm actually closer to those people at these events now because they felt my honesty. And it wasn't to do it, I wasn't doing it for that reason. I just needed to voice it to get it off my chest to feel clean because one of the things that really happened for me this weekend, and this was a powerful weekend, um, the end of their one year long program in uh, Mastery, I got to really st see, to see two things. One was, and this is independent of the actual event and the people going through it was the, 
I'd say the power. The gift I bring when I'm in my masculine, which is what I do more of the time now, and having been in rooms like that before and seeing how far I've moved, there's something about holding space as a masculine man, a, a, a safe space, and I heard feedback on it, so I know this is true, has an impact. It creates a ripple, and it's very powerful and profound to have that with an audience that's mostly women. In the room, there were four guys all together, two on the team, two in the room. <clears throat> out of about 50 different people altogether. So there was a lot more women than men in there. So to hold that space required, in a sense, a lot more commitment, a lot more openness, a lot more groundedness and presence in my masculine to do that. And to be really honest, it was effortless. Now, I'm saying that from a point of view, not saying like, oh, look at me, I'm special, but realizing how doing this work, and which I reckon to everybody, if you're doing work in the masculine feminine polarity, it's a key part of your learning to discover your polarity, your strength and your gifts. Whoever, teach you, whoever teaches you go with, and I do recommend Alison Armstrong's work with backs because that stuff really works and I'm grateful I got a chance to be exposed to it. But what I discovered is having been doing this work now for 11 years, so it's not just the last few months, but I started doing this journey of the masculine feminine piece 11 years ago and back then I had no clue. I was really in a place of not knowing what I didn't know. And when I started discovering and learning about these keys about masculine energetics and polarity and balance, it's changed my life, but also what I'm noticing is it's changed the way the world sees me. Because that's the thing that's important. Being in this journey for 11 years, I don't necessarily notice the changes because it's been incremental. But I'm very clear now that what I'm presenting, what I bring to the world is important for me and for other people. And that's something that really comes back to this being in integrity. Because integrity is like being integrated, but it's also about being um, aligned and being aligned to who we are. And a lot of people out in the world, especially in places of leadership where they're noticed, don't demonstrate honesty or integrity. But I'm not going to go down that road. What I'm going to speak to is us, us regular folks, that we have room to grow in our ability to be honest, to be in integrity, to speak from a place of truth. Because if you're having a relationship and you're not doing that, you are at some point in time going to, well, say in at least London term, you're going to come a cropper, meaning that you're going to um, make a mistake that's going to cost you dearly. So relationships especially, and I've talked about this in another way before, the thing about when you lie in a relationship, when you don't tell the truth, it's a lot of work to remember what you said. And this is such a simple thing, people think about this. If you're telling the truth, you don't have to remember anything because you're telling the truth of what's present for you in that moment and you, you speak it. If you're in a relationship where you are not willing to tell the truth and you keep hiding it by telling lies, it becomes more and more challenging because it's like spinning plates. Keep spinning those plates and keeping that falsehood going. And it's frankly, it's stressful, it's debilitating, it'll make you sick, it, will, it may be the death of you. It certainly can cause ulcers because you're being out of integrity with your ability to stay aligned to your truth. <coughs> Excuse me. So being in integrity, staying true to your values, being honest with who you are and with your partner if you're in a relationship, makes your life a whole lot easier because you simply stay true to yourself. There's a, um, a seminar, I took a seminar years ago, an insight seminar, and we had this, they, they do a lot of things with wordplay, and they talk about this thing about the difference between honesty and truth. And they took the word honest and they broke it down into the Latin, may have been, they may take liberties, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a Latin scholar, but they, may, they did say in Latin that honesty, so honest breaks down to own est, O-N-E-S-T which is in translation from Latin, is supposed to be, be, to be one with what is. So honesty is something that is basically integrity-based. It's a place where you can be present with what is and be, and be clear with that. Truth is something usually with a big T, which is much more about um, spiritual truths or principles that don't change. But honesty, because the thing about people is we change and grow and evolve, honesty is something that evolves with us. So. I learned myself, especially from going back two years ago, I don't know necessarily if I had the courage back then to do what I did this time, to speak the truth and to, and to basically say it in a way that the one was clean. It wasn't about, I need to get vent this and get it from my chest, but just speaking my truth, I, I received so much love and feedback back from it, and it felt comfortable to say it. It wasn't like you're going, oh, I'm scared of saying it, but I need to say it anyway. It felt very comfortable because I'm really clear now that to hide things, to make um, your truth to make your honesty less accessible is not a winning situation. So my point, and really want to get to the bottom line, is we simplify this, 
because again, I'm, it's been a long, the weekend's been a long weekend, holding space for two days is a pretty intense process. And I don't have a great deal of teaching in this, it's more as a, just a, as a, um, a nudge for you, so to speak, which is, okay, homework. I'm gonna jump to homework, it just came up. Is in your relationships, be it your primary romantic relationship if you're in one, or in your familiar relationships around you, whether it's with your kids, your parents, siblings, or just in your social circles, where can you improve? Yes, where can you improve your ability to be honest with them? Where can you improve where you can stay in integrity with those people around you? For example, are you somebody who always says yes to people because you were, you're a natural people pleaser? Oh, did I say that out loud? Is it possible that maybe you could be more honest by saying no, for example? Or maybe the other way around. Maybe you're saying no because you don't want to go out and play. You want to stay home and be safe. You don't want to get out and explore more. Maybe for you, a stretch might be saying yes once in a while. And I'm saying these as very general terms because I want you to think about, as your homework, if you choose to take it on, what is your next level of transparency? Because when you're being honest and you're in integrity, it's almost like being transparent. You're not hiding anything. There's no masks. There's no falsehood. So it's a form of being transparent, which I think is a great place to be in any relationship, especially romantic relationships. Because the more clean you can be and the more open you can be to share with your partner, the deeper the intimacy becomes. And yes, those of you who know better know that intimacy is, not, intimacy is not all about sex. But being honest and clean and transparent in your relationship with your partner, especially romantic partner, can take your relationship to a depth or a height, depending on you look at it, that you may never experience before. So you, my advice to you, my recommendation to you, one is to start getting clear where you could be more in integrity, more honest, more truthful, more aligned. And secondly, where can you bring that into your relationship? Because the other thing is, if you're in a relationship, there's two people. And sometimes it takes one to lead the other person into the next place. So if you're finding the relationship is not as clean as it could be, not as open, not as trusting as it could be, maybe it's time to have a conversation about honesty. Invite your partner to be honest with you as much as you want to be honest with them. Because if you're doing this one-sided, that's out of balance. So if your relationship um, expansion and for some of you that might be ending a relationship, but actually there's no honesty there. But if you're in a relationship expansion, being honesty is a ground rule. That's why I said in the title that honesty and integrity are requirements for a relationship. Now, if you don't want those, that's fine with me, but I'm suggesting if you want a better relationship than you've had, bringing those qualities into the relationship will transform your commitment, your connection, your communication, and your intimacy. And that is your homework. <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to get off the broadcast. I started late tonight. Usually it's 5 p.m. Pacific time. By the way, if you're just joining me and you've never seen me at broadcast before, shame on you. No, actually. But I normally do this at 6 p.m. Sorry, at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Let me get that clear. I was actually at the uh, PAX. Um, what was it called? It was the, sort of the PAX Mastery Certification Program weekend this weekend. But, uh, serving, supporting, staffing. And it was a profound weekend. And frankly, I'm exhausted. I need to go eat. So I'm going to sign off now. But before I do, let me know. Let me uh, let me tell you that you can find these broadcasts on my Facebook page on on, you, on Facebook. That's, yeah, Facebook page on Facebook. That makes sense. And also my YouTube channel. So give you the links. My Facebook business page where all these broadcasts live, which is Barry Selby the author. I then repurpose these, put them onto my YouTube channel, which is also my name, which is Barry Selby, as all my social media is. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and on there you'll find a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live. Thirdly, I have got a podcast, Building Slowly, which is basically all my replays in audio format. So I've been putting out my Facebook Lives into YouTube, in video for YouTube, and then onto my podcast in audio format. So that uh, playlist, sorry, that uh, podcast is Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that as well. You can download the audios to listen when you're driving, working out, cycling, do something we can't watch a screen. That's your homework. Um, sorry, you've got your homework and you know where to find me. This is my daily Facebook Live again, 5 p.m. Pacific time usually. I'll be back again tomorrow with some new topic. We'll see what it is. And I thank you for being with me. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. If you want help in this area, please reach out to me. I do support relationships and singles especially and I serve my feminine audience every day. So thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.